Yes, and um, this is Art History 497X, and we are uh, going through some JavaScript lessons today. Now, I want you to keep in mind, if you're getting frustrated with JavaScript, that the point here isn't to make you a you know fully functional uh, computer coder. Um, if you're having troubles, that's okay. Um, really, what you're trying to grasp here is the basic organization, the kind of organization that uh, the computer or, or coding um, uh, makes you give to your thoughts. So there's a certain way that computer programs are organized. That organization has to do with sort of a set of instructions and um, or processes. Um, and those instructions are very, very explicit. So it makes you rethink things much in the same way that when you were a sophomore, perhaps in high school and you were learning geometry and you were having to do geometric proofs, kind of in the same way that something that seemed maybe very intuitive to you became very difficult when you had to break it down into the perfect step-by-step, -step, one part leading directly to the next part, explicit logical transition. Um, just as that's difficult, coding is difficult too. And so part of why this is hard is because it's really asking you to think in a different way. And the point for our class is that thinking in that different way actually has real aesthetic implications. It changes the kinds of questions that you can ask uh, in architecture, and uh, it therefore creates buildings that look very different. And so in order to understand why buildings look the way they do, we really need to look under the, under the skin, if you will, of the building and see what kind of new logics are governing it. And for the sake of your last project, you need to be asking yourself, how do these new logics um, differ from the old logics of drawing? And so why might questions and solutions posed by architecture for the last 500 years be very different from the architecture in the last 10 years? So I keep that in mind uh, as we're going through these problems because I really do um, appreciate the fact that this might be frustrating. And for those of you for whom it's not frustrating, um, I am very happy to see you sort of explore this more and maybe go even deeper into what you think the aesthetic ramifications for this kind of thinking are for architecture. Okay, so um, this section is really starting out as a review. So it starts out, let's briefly review, use the computer to determine the range that our bank balance fits in. If balance is less than $10, use console.log to print the balance minus $5. Otherwise, use console log to print the balance. So, you know, this might be kind of a set of circumstances where you want to build in a safety valve for your checking account, right? So you're going to have the computer monitor your checking account and uh, once it falls below $10, you're going to tell it to give you your balance minus $5, hopefully preventing you then from bouncing a check because you have a $5 kind of cushion there. So uh, the first thing we want to do is um, think about those instructions. And we understand that uh, those instructions aren't really telling you what the very next step would be. In order to figure that out, you actually have to go to the code and start to read the code. Remember, code is not just for the computer. It's actually designed for humans to be able to read. Um, the computer, in fact, doesn't read this code. The computer reads machine language, which is zeros and ones. So this is actually standing between as the medium that both um, a computer through an interpreter or compiler can understand uh, this language, but we also as humans can look at this language and given enough practice we can understand it too. So just spend a couple seconds looking at that first line and, and see if you can't figure out what the intention of that line is. So you're just going to try to read it basically. Okay, so uh, hopefully you've sort of rehearsed in your mind something that sounds like um, line one declares a variable using the keyword var, variable. So it declares a variable. That variable is going to be called balance. And that balance is going to be some number. In this case, it's 20.97. But the power of declaring balance a variable is that you no longer ever have to type 20.97. In fact, that's sort of the, the value that is passed into that variable called balance, but you want to write the whole function using balance because you don't necessarily care exactly what the number is. That's going to change, but you always want to work with that number, and you want those instructions to follow through no matter what that number is. So you're going to use balance rather than the number when you write your function, um, or excuse me, your if-else statement. 
So uh, the very next line is complete the condition in the parentheses on line four. So now we're going to start with our if-else statement. And if you remember correctly, there are three parts to an if-else statement. The first is the if, and then the stuff in the parentheses, and that is called the conditional. So uh, if the conditional is met, that's the first part, then do the, fun do the code in the first set of curly braces, that's the second part, else do the code in the second curly braces, that's the third part. So it's basically an if-else statement has three parts, two of which are sets of code in curly braces, and the first part is that conditional statement in the center. So now we think about those instructions that we had, and our if statement is if the balance is less than $10, so that's easy enough to write here. Oh, I need to reset my code. There we go. So if, we just sort of saw what the answer was there, but if balance is less than or equal to, oops, helps if I, there we go, hit that shift key in the right spot. If balance is less than or equal to $10, then do the first block of code in the curly braces. And we know that that is to say console.log. And then what we want is balance minus $5. And then remember, in those curly braces, everything needs a semicolon. Else, do what's in the second set of curly braces, which is just console log the balance. Right? And again, semicolon to end that. So variable balance equals this. If balance is less than $10, print out balance minus $5. Else, console log the balance. So what do you think is going to happen with our 2097 balance? Good, you're right. It's going to print out 2097 because that's greater than $10. Okay, so far so good. That's the first lesson and you can go on when you're ready or if you need to, you can go on to the second video. Okay, thanks so much.